Well, let's move on and consider entropy in a little more detail, and in particular, take a look at its properties as a state function. So remember what a state function says, the, the property of being a state function says, that irrespective of what path you take between one state point and another, where state point implies a specification of, say, temperature, pressure, volume, temperature, pressure, number of particles. Uh, you can't specify all of temperature, pressure, and volume. That the substance dictates that. But uh, temperature, pressure, number of particles. Irrespective of what path you take, as long as you end up at the same destination, you should see the same change in the state function. Indeed, if you end up taking a circular path, that's what this equation says, so a circle integral, you follow a path back to its original point, since you're back at the original point, you must still have the same value of the state function. That is, you will have changed by zero. So delta S is zero for a cyclic process. But what I'd like to do then is go back to our ideal gas roadmap with, that we used to look at changes in internal energy and observed that U was a state function. So here's our, our old friend where we considered different ways to go from original pressure, volume, and temperature to a second pressure and volume, but still the same temperature. So there's the isothermal expansion, the adiabatic expansion, followed by constant volume warming, and the constant pressure expansion, followed by constant volume cooling. So I want to look at, uh, I'll start with path A versus path B plus path C. What's the change in entropy along these two different paths? If it's a state function, it's got to be the same change in entropy. So let's just do the math and check. So remember that the reversible heat for the isothermal path, since it is isothermal, the change in internal energy is zero all along the path. That means that del Q is equal to minus del W. And the reversible work is the pressure of the ideal gas being the external pressure. So NRT1, the temperature we're operating at, divided by V, dV. And so if I uh, now equate that with the reversible heat, it's just a change in, uh, sorry, it's, it's exactly this. It's NRT1. I integrate to get the heat. Sorry, I'm moving a little slowly here. So this is the delta. In order to get the actual heat change, I want to integrate dV over V from V1 to V2, and I get nRT1 log V2 over V1. And we did this in week five. You could go back and review those videos if you want to see those steps again. So given that, this is just recapitulating that equation, I've got the, uh, the change in the, the heat here. If I instead want to compute the change in entropy, now I integrate not del Q, but del Q over T from state point one to state point two. So one over T one, because T is a constant here, nRT one, those T's will cancel. So I'll get the integral from V one to V two of nRV dV, nR log V two over V one. All right, so that is the change in entropy along path A. I will ask you to notice that uh, since volume two is greater than volume one, so we've moved from left to right on the volume axis, this is a positive, this is a number greater than one. That makes the logarithm a positive value. N and R are positive, number of moles and a, a constant that's positive. And so the change in entropy is positive. Entropy has increased as I've gone from a lesser volume to a greater volume. And that's consistent with our, our idea that entropy is a measure of disorder. If I have the same amount of gas in a larger volume, there's sort of more ways to imagine where the gas molecules might be. Now, let's consider paths B and C. So path B is particularly simple. Path B is the adiabatic expansion and adiabatic means that there is no heat transfer. Del Q is equal to zero. So in that case, the entropy change, if I integrate zero divided by T, it doesn't really matter what T is, I'm integrating zero, and I get zero. So the change in entropy for an adiabatic expansion is zero. 
And then I'll ask you to remember that we worked out, and you can look at video 5.4 if you'd like to see the individual steps, that the heat transfer for step C, the constant volume heating, was equal to, there's no work done, it's equal to the internal energy change, and so that is the integral from T2, the starting temperature, to T1, the ending temperature, CVT dt. And we showed that that was equal to, and this is now in video 5.5, if you want to see the individual steps, I'm just going to recall the answer. It is equal to nr log v2 over v1. This is indeed, then, when I sum this result with this result, 0 plus nr log v2 over v1 is indeed this term. And that's just what we found for path A. So entropy is obeying its necessary behavior as a state function, that independent of path, when we arrive at the final point, we have the same net entropy change. So I'm going to pause here for a second, and I'm going to let you consider what the entropy change is for path E to see if you've appreciated the development so far. All right, we've begun to get some experience working with entropy, and hopefully it's becoming a, a little bit more comfortable and familiar. Uh, this is just the definition again of ds. I'll point out one uh, feature, I suppose, that's also worth bearing in mind as a conceptual understanding point, and that is that if entropy is related to the disorder of a system, and you increase the entropy by adding heat, so del Q is positive, notice that the change in entropy is dependent on what is the current temperature. So at very low temperatures, this implies a certain quantity of heat will increase the disorder considerably more than adding that same quantity of heat at very high temperatures. All right, so the same heat delivered at low T increases entropy more. So that's just an appreciation, if you will, of the definition of ds. Well, having looked at the ideal gases, ideal gas, expansion paths, that is, we've got uh, some feel for how entropy relates to heat and work and different paths. Next, I want to consider the role of spontaneity more generally in thermodynamics and indeed express it in terms of the second law.